Last two, last rep. Ready, go. Drive, baby, drive down. Rest. The NFL Combine is just weeks away. Every rep gained or tenth of a second lost can make a prospect's draft stock soar. Some have more to prove than others. The product is here. You just got to make sure you continue to train right, eat right, and take care of the body, OK? So I'm not going to beat you up. But you can't be hurt down the stretch. DK Metcalf is all too familiar with injuries. He's working his way back from a broken neck suffered just six months before the draft. Come on back. It was on kickoff return. I got hit under my chin. I walked off the field like fine until I got an offensive huddle. Then I just started grabbing my shoulder and went down to a knee. Not a good sign, DK Metcalf. Sophomore from Oxford who's fourth in the league in yards per game is headed back to the Ole Miss locker room. I really thought it was a stinger and like it was going to go away, but it didn't go away like after 20 minutes. But when the locker room changed and I came back out with a neck brace on, they took x-rays, said I was fine, but I didn't find out until the next day that I had actually broken. There you go. There you go. My injury could happen at any point to anybody, so I'm not worried about the injury prone tag. Your body's already rebounding, improving faster than it should be. That's good. Feel good. While Metcalf proves his injury is history, he's helping fellow receiver Nikhil Harry get to the top of his game. We got pull up iso hold. Pull up iso hold. 40 seconds. DK is a real cool dude. He's real passionate. He's real competitive. You know, we push each other every day. Do we? Halfway. Time. Ah. Good job. Nice job. Hey, bro. Kill. 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 I'm talking about get this one too. You put two on? Yeah. Guys, your body can handle this no problem. Just push with the mind. Push with the mind. Come on, Dylan. Stay there, Darwin. Time! <laughs> hey, guys, wave this off. Let's try to organize this a little better this week. So let's go two lines down here on this end. Gonna go five high knees and then five butt kicks. Same thing, so 10 total. Wednesday's kind of our active recovery day. I think that's mostly what the pool is. You're getting in the pool, doing high knees, butt kicks, some jumps. Still being able to work the muscles, but you're not getting the impact on your joints. This training's been different because it's full, you're fully committed to this. You don't have anything, any other distractions. All my life I've been training along with having to be at school and worrying about classes and homework. Now it's full workout and full training. The 40-yard dash has been a focus of Trace McSorley's training. The 40 and the combine drills is probably a little bit more important than a lot of other quarterbacks out there because of my athletic ability and how I play the position and how I play the game. The same can be said for most prospects. Your 40 time can make or break your combine. It's extremely detail-oriented, a lot more than I expected. Lock your arms out. From the time you start, and especially because it's a laser time, you know, every second matters, every movement matters. Hand is up. The technique is Go. the most important part. If I come out with a lot of adrenaline, I'm gonna run really fast because it's gonna be a lot of pressure on. My goal is for the 40 to be in the mid 4-4 range or the low 4-5 range. Remember, you're fast yeah. enough. You don't need yeah. to stand up until I mean, 22, 23. So go ahead and get through that point. All right. Lift. I'm hoping to get a 4-3 in the 40. 
and I think it's a reachable goal from our times and training here. Uh, I want to crack the 4-6, so be in that 4-5 range. After more than two months of training, the combine is finally here. I tell the teams that you're getting a guy that's going to come in every single day. No one's going to outwork me. It's a chance for players to showcase their skills for all 32 teams. I see myself as the best receiver in this draft. It's a hectic week, even before the events start. You measure straight up as like a 12, 12 and a half lengthwise, and you're probably sizing up a little bit to get some added wear. So my foot's super fat. Snug a little bit. I might get a 14, yeah. yeah. Okay. Especially for routes and stuff, I have to wear mid tops. The first thing that's, uh, that sticks out in your head is what you're going to be walking across the stage in, right? Yeah. I just know I want like a pretty color, not too flashy, mm -hmm. but not too dull. Coming down. Open up. You're running a later group. Yeah, but I think you'll run at one. Come on, get us out tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, you can pop in. We won't like ramp you up or anything. You'll be fine. We'll get all the work we need tonight. I feel ready. This is finally what you came here to do. So it's just now everything's coming together. Been working for a long time for really tomorrow. I want to be able to go out and just physically perform on the field. The combine is all about numbers. Trace McSorley is just a hair over six foot and only a feather over 200 pounds. But he's trying to show he has the size of an NFL QB. You see Drew Brees, Russell, Baker, those kind of guys that are making people step back and realize that you don't need to be the six foot four, 220 pound guy back there. Quarterbacks are now being looked at in, in different lights. Despite setting many passing records at Penn State, McSorley was asked by some NFL teams to work out at the combine at defensive back a position he played in high school. Tackle by McSorley. Trace McSorley. Superman over the top. The unorthodox request caught the eye of McSorley's former college teammate, Saquon Barkley. There was a time period where I thought about playing defensive back coming out of high school. I had to just be real with myself about what I wanted to do. Saints head coach Sean Payton suggested that McSorley could follow in the footsteps of Julian Edelman, a college quarterback who became Tom Brady's number one receiver. Part of it was cool, obviously, you just won the Super Bowl MVP, and anytime you're compared to someone like that, it's awesome. But I came to the realization that I'd always put the work in to be a quarterback, and I shouldn't be changing because other people tell me to. What Trace McSorley did at Penn State was nothing short of spectacular. His passing, his leadership, now here he is at a combine. Coming out of the combine, obviously, I want to be able to just prove my athletic ability finish in the top two of every drill. Four, five, eight for Trace McSorley. He's a football player. He's gonna hang around in some capacity. McSorley answers his critics by running the fastest 40 of any quarterback at the 2019 Combine. Being the fastest linebacker has been Devin White's goal since day one. Pull that off, and he may become a top five pick. Make your body feel good, man. Make it feel relaxed. Devin White from LSU is the best linebacker on the board. He is a sideline to sideline playmaker. He's a freak when you watch him on tape. My main thing is to dominate each day. You know, I really want to have overall grade of an A-plus at the Combine. In the Combine's history, only three inside linebackers have run a sub-4540. <laughs> see what Devin White does. 442. Rich, <laughs> giddy up. Giddy up. Nicely caught, man. He's so good. He's lived up to the reputation today. That's what I'm saying. That's just a blessing, bro. Bro, well, that's fine. 
I never ran 442 in my life. I knew I was going to be the fast linebacker. White's 40 time is tied for the fastest ever for inside linebackers. My mom FaceTimed me, and like we talked about like being the fastest, do your best. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that I got cleared on January 22nd um, to have full contact. It's just a blessing to be able to play the game of football again. DK Metcalf uses the bench press to show scouts he's back to full strength. Metcalf does 27 reps, an impressive number for any position, but especially for a wide receiver. I see you, DK. It's a tough act to follow, but Nikhil Harry is up for the challenge. I knew I was going to hit 20, most definitely. After that, it was just how much I wanted it. I just grinded out those last seven, and I'm thankful to be able to put up that number. Up to this point, this is the most I've done. my goals are just to have my stock just to prove to everybody that I'm the athlete that that appears on that field there are some doubts about Harry's speed but none about his hands. Rich, I asked a uh, NFL coach, who in the wide receiver group has helped his stock the most this week? And this was the answer here, Nikhil Harry. Hey, he's a physical specimen, unbelievable, but he was great in the room in the formal interview. They did memory stuff with him. He recalled everything from that Arizona State playbook. They said he's probably gonna run around a 4-7, 4-7-5, but don't be distracted by that. This one's important for Nikhil Harry because you heard reports that maybe he might be in the four sevens. Four, five, nine. That is a great time for Nikhil Harry. I didn't see that one coming. And the scouts are even more wild about Harry. My mindset's just going and doing what I've been doing. You know, I've been doing this my whole life. I can't go into the moment thinking it's too big, thinking it's too small. You know, I just got to maintain level-headed. The wide receiver group, what do you think of it as a whole? Well, I talked to somebody who was at the weigh-ins for the wide receivers and said it's the most impressive group physically that he's ever seen in 20-plus years of coming to the combine. And at the front of the line is DK Metcalf, who had 228 pounds, Rich. He's a human Batman suit. The question around Metcalf is how fast can the big guy be? Here's DK Metcalf. Is he as fluid as Calvin Johnson was as a player? I watch Saquon's combine, Julio, Calvin Johnson, and just try to mirror those guys or be better than them. Calvin Johnson ran the 40-yard dash in 4.35 seconds. Go ahead. 
Come on. Come on. Four, three, three. Stop. That's a big dude, man. And watching him run that 40, that was like, oh my God. I've always said Julio Jones is God's gift to receivers. This dude right there, Metcalf, he might be the second coming. Just four months after breaking his neck, Metcalf ran the fastest 40-yard dash for anyone weighing 225 or above in combine history. You got a bright future, man. Yeah, that's, that's all I had. Yeah, yeah though. With the uh, yeah, physical process, you know, it's great. great. You, you, you'll, you'll have a great future. Man. You know, best of luck to you. Thanks. Just want to do it myself. I know when I see something great. Right. Thank you. All the best to you. day in the 40. Had some good routes, but I still need to clean up some stuff. What happens next? Where are you going from here? What are you going to be doing? Fried program? chicken is the only thing on my mind right now. I'm headed to Oxford, Mississippi. <laughs> I miss my family. <laughs> So my second passion in life, hands down, has to be the country boy lifestyle. This is my daughter, Daisy May. She's five years old. Her birthday is coming up in May. She's a stand-up bread, and she's my best friend also. When I first got her, I traveled all the way to Tennessee, which is like a seven-hour drive. Once I declared for the NFL draft, I had to pick where I wanted to train. I knew I wasn't going to go far because I couldn't leave my baby behind. So I went to Texas. Everywhere I go, I take the truck and I take her with me. I just got to keep her in my presence. I grew up around horses all my life. You know, ever since I was five, when I first learned how to ride, my friend, Dupree Robinson. His family taught me how to ride horses. I used to always be at their doorstep at 6 a.m. in the morning trying to ride. I always give her an apple before we ride, because she know. I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to ride in the stadium, which, like, to this day, is still the best moment of my life. This top five draft pick, you know, it can change that. Finally, when I got in middle school, I begged my grandfather and my dad's dad to give me $500. So I took that $500 and I went and bought my first horse, which is named Ricky Bobby. Gotta get the details. Isn't it? Full of love. I always knew this was going to be my theme because I liked it from the very beginning. I'm 240 pounds, and she carried me every day nonstop. And she always tried to beat other horses when we go to horse rides. Whoa! That's why I love her. Like, that's why she would never leave because her heart. You can't measure her size. You know, she might not be the biggest, she probably one of the fastest, but she got the biggest heart. Easy, mama. Who won the combine this weekend? Devin White, the LSU linebacker. Here's a guy who ran a 4-4-2-40, jumped 39 and a half inches in the vertical mm. and plays off the ball linebacker. Like this is a guy who could be Roquan Smith. This is a guy who could start right away and play at the next level. For most prospects, Pro Day is their last chance to show off their talents. For Devin White, the combine was perhaps enough. I want to go high as possible. I want to go number one. I feel like I'm the number one player. Coach, am I the best linebacker you ever coached? I ain't gonna say that. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, how many buckets of oil winners you ever coach? Uh, no comment. You <laughs> getting, getting moved up? You ready to go? Yeah. Is it ladder going? Trying to be. Yeah. I 
mean, I really can't prove nothing at Pro Day. When it's time to do drills, I don't want to feel left out, you know, just watching. I'm just ready to just show, like, I'm still the same Devin White that was training for the combine and look good at the combine. I'm gonna look good at Pro Day. Man, I feel like it's a no-brainer top 10 for me. Anywhere in the top 10, though, I wouldn't be upset, but if I fall past 10, I'm probably one of the maddest kids sitting at that table. They ran you pretty hard. How did you feel today? I mean, I knew they were going to try to get it out of me. They were going to try to see, because I still conditioning. You know, even though I killed the combine, I'm a guy that I'm always working. I'm going to be prepared every time, whatever situation you put me in. I like grilling. Every time we have steaks, like, I always want to be the one grilling it. Looking forward to just get out there. Do all the throws and uh, and feel good afterwards. Just like the combine, weight off my shoulders once it's done. Who's your fingers? My hands are clean. <laughs> it's a good thing. Get ready for pro day. A little pasta. While White is a consensus top ten pick, Trace McSorley is just hoping to hear his name called. The former toast of Penn State is looking to build off a strong combine with one final showcase for scouts. I was real excited for him at the combine. He ran really well, accomplished what he needed to accomplish to prove that he's more than just a tough kid. We'll go back to Trace McSorley for a second. He might be the most impressive person. He's football intelligent, he's a leader, and he cares about his team more than himself. I love the story about him having an it factor and being a competitor and all that. Nope. But it was cool that he kind of showed out that he is an athlete and he's pretty elite. Who are you hugging first when you get that name called come draft day? Uh, my mom and my dad. Uh, they'll be right next to me. Uh, I'll probably just be at home. So they sacrificed a lot to be able to be in this opportunity. We haven't missed a game the last in three. Yeah, last four, three well, years and in, high yes. school and everything. So the, the, the NFL is a big step up. It'll next step, we'll go wherever we have to, right? Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be a big, uh, a big change coming up. Location may not be McSorley's only change. Some question what position he'll play. Had a lot of success as a quarterback, and that's kind of where I've always seen myself. If you have a 53-man roster of 45 actives, what if you have a guy that could be your third quarterback or second quarterback and also can do something else? Couldn't hurt. <laughs> Any team that takes him is going to be glad they did. I think he's, he's worth a whole lot. I guess I'd like him to end up where they want him most. Really good. Delicious. Yeah, they're good. Doing right? Yeah, no, you did them really well. The NFL draft is a month away. Which round Trace McSorley will be taken is still unknown. His pro day is his final chance to prove that when he is selected, it should be as a quarterback. Just want you to know that we love your game. Appreciate so look that. forward to watching you work out. I right, wish you the All best. Right, thank you. All right, you yes, back. Sir. Good to meet, Good you. meet you. McSorley's support team includes Penn State head coach James Franklin, trainer and former NFL quarterback Ken Mastroli. You ready? Yeah. And former teammate and New York Giants superstar Saquon Barkley. So what are you hearing from scouts? Like, what are they saying? You, you need to work on it. What's your weakness? What they love about you? I mean, weakness has just been like consistently being accurate. Mm -hmm. That's been the main thing. I think the biggest question mark coming in was like accuracy, sometimes outside the numbers. Him having the arm strength to get it out there with consistency. Let him just get a couple, like he can just air out a little bit. Uh McSorley completes 52 of 56 passes. Good job. Good job, buddy. We wanted to get him under center, show his footwork, and just show NFL teams and football intellect-wise, he's going to check all the boxes. And then throwing the ball, he can make all the throws. Obviously, the throwing was a big thing for me, being accurate and being able to push the ball down the field between the combine and then today with Pro Day, I think I was able to do that. Thank you, DeAndre. Huh? They came out early. Come on, keep it on them. Is that your best? Uh, yeah. I think so. 
You going back to Cal? Come on. Yeah, I gotta go back out to Cal. You should come out there and mess with me. I might try to. If I get like some time. Or honestly, maybe. Well, maybe get drafted. Yeah, that's what maybe after that. Come out there. Mm-hmm. Was that it? Dropping downs today, Shorty. Trying to do something. You was doing it clean, bro. Way to go, buddy boy. That was awesome. Richard, you feeling okay? Yeah, no, I'm good. My dad's been a role model for me my entire life. In this process, if there's a decision that needs to be made or something that's going on, he's always there to have my back. And that means the world to me. <laughs> At Ole Miss, there's also a strong bond between father and son. My dad, Terrence Metcalf, big guy, about 6'4", 300 pounds. It's like a cheat code because he's been through this. He's just happy for me, and I'm just happy to be in the moment. We just had a pick go off the board here uh, by Chicago, I believe, at 93, and I'll bring Mike Golick in for that. It was Terrence Metcalf, the guard from Ole Miss, an Ole Miss Rebel. And, Mike, you've seen him in a lot in oh, the yeah. What do you think of him? He is an animal. Let's go, big go, baby! DK Metcalf's father, Terrence, played seven years in the NFL not that long ago. It's been a dream of mine to play in the NFL since I watched my dad when they won the NFC Championship against the Saints in 06, and just seeing him and the rest of the team in that atmosphere at a real NFL game, that's when I really like wanted to play. Soldier Field about to explode, the fans on their feet. Metcalf followed his old man to Ole Miss. Before he can do the same in the NFL, he has one final test. Hey, we do this. Yo. Let's go, baby. You know what I'm saying? We do this. Hey, Have dominate. Dominate on three. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. After shocking people with one of the most impressive 40-yard dashes in combine history, his main goal for Pro Day is to prove he can run the entire route tree. You're talking about 6'3 and a half, 228, running a 4'3'3. There's not a lot of guys like that. I don't care if only, he can only do one thing, and that's run a nine route. He runs it really well. They put you through some drills, some press coverage. Some yeah, how do you think the route part of it went? That's probably where right. you really wanted to showcase what you could do. Yes, sir. Uh, the route part went real good for me. When you talk to scouts today, after the workout, what did they tell you about today's workout? They said today was real good for me. They said I finally could run routes. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I've been running routes, but you know, just to showcase my, my talents uh, was real good. Football isn't Metcalf's only talent. I've been cooking since I was in high school. This is what I want to do if football ever ends for me one day. I did not want to be a lawyer or a doctor. I heard that school was too long for all of that, so I went with the shorter route. I've always wanted to go to culinary school. My favorite dish back home is like fried chicken, cornbread, greens, and went back home for Christmas. I couldn't even like eat it because I was like, I don't want to start a, a, a new habit of just like eating bad food. You like any red in your steak? No, no. You like some red? Just a little red, just a little red. What you like your blood on? Yeah. yeah. So you I can't living. see no blood, bro. You ain't living like that. <laughs> don't get used to this. <laughs> One time. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be good, bro. Appreciate you, Chef. Whoa. For real? For real, that's ah. good. <laughs> hey, what's for dinner tomorrow, DK? Bro, I'm not cooking. <laughs> oh, you did it big for real. She basically loves to bake. She used to bake all the time when I was growing up. So and you it's can bread. See, so you can see she baked about three loaves of bread. And then... Um, and there is a sweet bread. Some sweet bread. And then um, it's called pilau. Uh, I used to eat this all the time growing up. And it's probably my favorite thing to eat. Um, I could eat this seven days out of the week. And this then some, some soup. soup. Pea soup. Some pea soup. 
it's just this is the the kill special right here. So this is this is basically what I grew up on. Um, I ate this frequently growing up. So so when it's he's coming favorites. home, I try to do that for him. My family's from an island in the Caribbean called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And my grandmother brought me to the United States when I was four years old. The way the chips fell, I ended up being in the spot I'm in now. So very grateful for this woman for, for taking a leap of faith because she just basically left a place where she just knew everything and just, just kind of started brand new. She had to start all over again. So big ups, big props to her for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we are the only ones out here. You know, everybody else at home. I have three daughters, a son, and four more grandchildren. They're all in the island. I visited my family, not this past Christmas, but the one before that. I hadn't seen my sister, my mother, um, or most of my other family members in about six to seven years. My sister was having her birthday party, and, you know, I basically just walked in and I surprised her. It was the most unexpected thing. They were not expecting me at all. Uh, my mother dropped to her knees. She couldn't believe it. It was an unforgettable moment. It was one of the best moments of my life. At his pro day, Nikhil Harry has the eyes of his biggest supporter and 27 NFL teams. We work for this day our whole life, man. A lot of us just gotta be patient, stay the course, trust the process. We work so hard at this. Let's just stay calm, let's do what we do. Let's go out here and let's look like some pro. At six foot two and 228 pounds, Harry has the size for the next level. But questions remain about his athleticism. A solid pro day could make Harry a first round pick. I knew a lot of the scouts had questions about my routes, whether I can get in and out my breaks. And I feel like I, I answered a lot of those questions today. I really didn't come in expecting to do any of the agility drills. The scouts were basically telling me that they wanted me to do it. At first, I was a little bit hesitant because, you know, my agents were telling me not to do it. I'm not here to, to screw with you. I have to do stuff that you're not ready for. I'm thinking about how that's what you're trying to do. So, all right, so don't worry about that. But, you know, at some point, I kind of felt like they were, like, challenging me. And I'm the type of guy, if a challenge is thrown my way, I'll take it 10 times out of 10. Even though I wasn't prepared, I haven't done any of those drills in over a month. And I felt like I'm a good enough athlete to go in there and, and, and still get a decent time without training for it. What did you think of the scouts asking you to do a few more drills mm -hmm. today than maybe you weren't expecting? Yeah, you know, they threw me a little bit of a curveball, but, you know, at the end of the day, that's life. You know, you have to adjust to, to the life you've been given, and, and, you know, I did that to that. I saw your family here, your grandma. I know you guys are really close. You know, you guys might be separated for the first time in a while right. and have to live somewhere else. You know, she, she's prepared me for this. You know, I'm a, I'm a grown man. You know, she's, she's raised me extremely well. No matter if we're two miles apart or 2,000 miles apart, it doesn't matter, you know. She'll always be with me. You know, she'll always have my back. I'll have her, so... Congratulations. Really appreciate your time Thank and, you. and good luck the rest of the way, man. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet okay. you. This is not just my moment. This is my grandmother's moment as well. When I get to the NFL, I'm the type of player that will produce at an extremely high level. As long as I keep my mentality, as long as I keep the humbleness that my grandmother instilled in me growing up, I know in my heart that I'll be just fine.
With his pro day over, Devin White finally has a break. He spends it where else but at the Louisiana Derby. Devin White. How you doing, Devin White, bro? Rounders out. Hey, good luck. Look, get a good spot. White's horse, Daisy May, isn't racing. So he enjoys the derby alongside one of the top trainers in Louisiana. You gotta be calm. 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 Let him take care of it himself. Let him take care of it himself. Let him take care of it himself. The hearts that I did in one. Oh my God. The hearts that I did in one. Look. Oh, we need a hug on that one. See, I told you. I told you. And you did exactly what I told you to do before you left. Hey, that was a hell of a race. Thank you. Thank you for everything. That's a pretty horse. NFL draft coming up April 25th. You're predicted to go in the top five. If you go to the NFL draft dressed better than you did today, man, I want to watch that. <laughs> I mean, I always got a style of my own, my own type of flavor. So, you know, when I when I step out into the world, I always want to dress, dress to impress. And, hey, every time I, you know, be seen, I want to be the best looking. The race was long, but the finish line is near as the rookies prepare for draft day. Ooh, that's the moment. I'm gonna have that pretty walk, I'm gonna hey. be smiling, teeth gonna be white, I'm gonna go get them clean, clean. <laughs> <laughs> I really think I should go one, but I just know the first team they got, you know, they just got um, Tyrell Suggs, so they don't really need a linebacker. Then I'll be like, dang, well, I should be two then. But guess what San Fran did? They got my boy Corn Alexander, so I know I don't need to be there. Then you be like, well, dang, he the best player, so he should go three. Then you're like, well, they just paid C.J. Mosley 85 million, so you know they don't need me. Number four Raiders sound really good, but you know, as I said, with Corn Alexander going to San Fran, that kind of opened the window up for me at the number five spot in Tampa. But if they feel like they need to go in another route, I know the Giants ain't gonna let me fall past them. You checked on Daisy May today? Yeah. I got all type of pictures and videos of Daisy May. Everybody says she gonna be watching back home. And Baton Rouge says she real happy. She proud of me. You gotta get the details. DM Daisy May, Devin Marcel. Only way I get nervous if I'm still on the board after six. And I start wondering then what I do wrong. These are strawberries, glass of milk. As a freshman when I couldn't go to sleep, I just went to a gas station one night and got a bottle of strawberry milk and put me right to sleep. So I just started <laughs> drinking it. I'm a little anxious just to find out where I'm going to be um, for the next few years. But um, I mean, it's been exciting just Seeing my family here just smiling around the hotel, and them just hanging out with me. We laid back, gonna chill, have fun, uh, sitting at the table, crack some jokes, oh, okay. and applaud when it's time to. <laughs> Do you have a suit like this on draft day? No, I was at home. And you don't get dressed up at home. You wear your jeans and your t shirt. Yeah, it's a big stage. And voila, look at him. Like DK Metcalf's dad, Terrence, some draftees prefer the comfort of their own home. Instead of traveling to Nashville, Nikhil Harry brings his family to him. I'm just thrilled that I'm here to share this experience with him. The family and I, we are, we're ecstatic. This is my cousin Petra. How you doing? Nice to meet you. This is my auntie Nadia right here. You know, we missed practically everything. So we basically just followed his career um, on television. My daughter and I, sometimes we hit in the bed around 5 a.m. How hard is that for you? It was pretty, it was pretty difficult. I was looking through some old pictures of you. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, younger? Yes. yes. Want me to bring it? It's a, it's a little album. You to get I mean, the giggle. Yeah, you can. Just to get the giggle. <laughs> oh. In 2008, when you went to the NFL experience and you were sitting with your head in the picture, mm -hmm. it was the Patriots in the form. I could not have offered him what he has now. My mom has done a tremendous job. It's really paid off. The sacrifice was worth it. Honey, bands in my pocket, it's on me. Honey, deep when I roll like the army. 
Get more bottles, these bottles are lonely. It's a moment when I show up, got them saying, wow. Honey, bands in my pocket, it's on me. Yeah, your grandma more probably know me. Get more bottles, these bottles are lonely. It's a moment when I show up, got them saying, wow. GK Metcalf. Catch me on the block like a Mutombo. 750 Lambo in the Utah snow. Just to play uh, in the same league that my dad did is amazing. The initials is DM for my baby, Daisy yeah. Made. I really wanted to ride on the red carpet, but that would have been very unsanitary. Come to the Chiefs, would you? Ride right yeah. here to the cold to the fifth head. You said a lot, but I got more now. Always going for it, never pump fourth down. Last call, Hail Mary Press got touchdown. Hey. We right here, we right here. You ready? Yeah, hey, I just want to say, wish you the best, bro. You know, always be the best draft class. Hey, let's get it. Hey, we work you, for I don't care if you go before me. I don't care we work for me. I'm going to support you no matter what. I'm going to be your number one fan. Like I told everybody else, let's be great. We work for it. Let's go. Hey. Let's do it. Ooh. Let's do it. Congratulations, man. Good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Football is football. Yes, Wherever you've been, that's football. Don't get paralysis from analysis. Yes, The anticipation is through the roof. Welcome in, everybody. The 2019 NFL Draft is now officially open. With the first pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. Number one, Kyler Murray. They're going Nick Bose, and then Quinn Williams. Hello? Hey, Devin. Yes, sir. This is Jason Light, GM of Tampa. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? You're about to be a buck. Hey, I'm ready to make it happen, man. All right, I'm going to give you the coach. Here you go. Hey, man, congratulations. Hey, thank you, Coach. Yeah, I told you when you're in here, you're going to be a buck, didn't I? <laughs> and, and I told you it was going to work out in our favor. We were going to make big things happen. Yes, indeed. Yes, we are. And uh, really excited about having you. And uh, put your work shoes on and let's go. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. All right. Buck. <laughs> Top five. Talk about it. With the fifth pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Devin White. This is my favorite guy in the draft. He may be the best player sideline to sideline in this whole draft. I've loved this pick for the Bucs. Congratulations, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. You're off awesome. it. Good to be right here, man. You feel it? I feel it. You may be the first guy who wore boots. Yeah. You have seven horses, including Daisy May. Yes, Are you going to take Daisy May and the other several to Tampa? All my horses are going to Tampa. We're a family. We're a family. You never leave family behind. Daisy May, we're going to Tampa. Overdrive, we're going to Tampa. Taylor May, we're going to Tampa. LSU Nation. Hey, it's Go Bucks. G E A U X. Bucks. I feel great. I put the work in. Tampa Bay just got a hell of a player. We're about to make big things happen. I see the future. The future is bright. I wonder who the Giants going to go right here. Let us go to Roger Goodell and find out what the Giants are doing at six. Daniel Jones? What? Daniel Jones? Yeah, I know exactly. Whoa, God. No wide receivers were projected to go top five. DK Metcalf and Nikhil Harry are still expecting to be first round picks, but you won't get the good news without good cell service. You can't call anybody? Oh, I don't got no reception right now. Me either. That's not good. I need reception. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to end up where I need to be. Exactly. I'm going to end up where I need to be. I'm not here to ask for anything. I'm just simply here to thank you. Thank you. And I trust in your plan. Whatever happens, no matter tomorrow, I know it's for a reason. I want to thank you for bringing me here. Amen. Hey,
20 picks have gone by, and Metcalf and Harry are still on the board. This is the longest we've ever gone in an NFL draft, ever. Without a single running back or wide receiver taken. There are a few teams with late first round picks in need of a wideout, including Baltimore, Seattle, and New England. What if, what if Ravens go receiver at 25? Well, right now, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. With the 25th pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Marquise Brown. I think they go wide receiver. Because you got to get a wide receiver. You just paid your quarterback all out. And if they go wide receiver, they run big. Wide receiver, I'm thinking DK Metcalf, so he can have a big target to throw to down the field. When Metcalf met with the Seahawks at the Combine, a Seattle scout had a specific wardrobe request. Wow. I would take my shirt off, too. What's up, man? How you doing, Dora? You don't have to listen to here, man. Yeah! <laughs> hey, make sure you get down. Well, let's find out who the Seahawks have taken. With the 29th pick, the Seattle Seahawks select L.J. Collier. Defensive oh. end, oh. I don't this on my worst enemy, boy. This leaves only one first round landing spot for Metcalf or Harry the world champion New England Patriots at number 32. Could this be DK Metcalf? Yeah, they just traditionally don't do wide receivers in round one. Tom Brady's got this arm. You lost your biggest weapon in Gronk. Take another chance on another big one. That pick is in. Where is Bill Belichick going? Uh, it's Harry. Super Bowl Hello. Hello. Uh, Nina Kelly's good spell check. It's kind of breaking up a little bit. Hello. Does anybody have connection? Does anybody have bars? Hello. Hello, it's good spell. Hello. Hello, it's good spell check. How you doing, coach? Good. Congratulations, your New England Patriots. Thank you, coach. I'm excited to start working with you, and uh, glad to glad to have you aboard. Yes, sir. Thank you. The New England Patriots select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. Harry has a new home. Metcalf will have to wait until tomorrow. As day two of the draft begins, there's few prospects remaining in the green room. DK Metcalf isn't one of them. He returns home to Mississippi to watch the remainder of the draft with family and friends. Should have never passed. Good evening. Welcome to night two of the 2019 NFL Draft. Like the night before, Metcalf's phone is silent. With the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Debo Samuel. South Carolina. And here comes the run on the wide receivers. 
Miko Hardman, wide receiver, Georgia. The Philadelphia Eagles select JJ Orsega Whiteside, wide receiver, Stanford. You gotta be the biggest slot. You gotta be the biggest slot. Oh, yeah. Okay, big exhale. Well, obviously, physically, he is a beast. Criticism that he really only ran three routes in college, and certainly there was some stiffness issues getting in and out of his routes. They said I got hip problems. I can't run routes. Before the draft, some predicted Metcalf could be the first receiver selected. Eight have now been taken ahead of him as the final pick in the second round approaches. Hello? DK. Yes, sir. Hey, it's John Schneider with the Seattle Seahawks. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, bud? You good? You doing all right? Yes, sir. Hey, yes, man, sir. get fired up. We're going to make you a Seahawk right here, okay? <laughs> you all right, bud? All right, man, congratulations. Thank you. It's <laughs> over with. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, look forward to this, brother, okay? Here's Coach Carroll. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. DK. <laughs> hey, DK, this is Coach Pete Carroll. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. <laughs> okay, we'll both cry together then, all right? <laughs> Why y'all wait this long, man? I know, I know you had to wait a little bit, but that doesn't matter because you're coming to Seattle, man. You're going to play, you're gonna play with the Seahawks, and you're going to catch fo footballs from Russell Wilson. So get your ass ready to go, big fella. We are fired up for it, and uh, the staff is excited. Listen to these guys. Here's your staff. About that. TK, this is awesome, man. We're so excited about this. I can't even tell you. Seattle Seahawks select. DK Metcalf, wide receiver, all the The lead, and just, it feels great just to know where I'm going to be. Today was stressful, but when I got that phone call, everything just went away. <laughs> when you saw the phone, like, did you know immediately what was going on? Yeah, I knew exactly what was going on. Since, because my phone hasn't rang for the past two days, so I knew something good was about to happen. <laughs> we are set for what is really, if we're honest about it, the most impactful day of the all three days of the NFL draft. Rounds four through round seven. Guys, it's going to be a spectacular afternoon. Penn State quarterback Trace McSorley waits with family in Virginia for his name to be called. <sighs> but it's possible he won't hear it at all. McSorley is a guy that everybody loves as a football player, but do they love him as a quarterback? What was your best vibe in your interviews? Um, I think Baltimore was good. Was it? Yeah. Um, Houston. Arizona was good, Houston was good. All three of those were like good vibes coming out of it, but you know, who knows what's going to happen with this. Oh, that's a crapshoot. Literally. <laughs> it is. So, just waiting. There's a spot for you, though. Somewhere. 
McSorley watches as five quarterbacks get drafted on day three, while his phone is quiet. With the 167th pick of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Clayton Thorson, quarterback, Northwestern. Clayton Thorson was a four-year starter at Northwestern. Jacksonville Jaguars select Gardner Minshew, quarterback, Washington State. But we're in the sixth round of the draft now. And here are some of the gems you can find in the sixth round. The best quarterback of all time, arguably, was sixth round. Tom Brady. You look at the fire. Right? Yeah. Tom Brady was drafted 199th overall. McSorley got the call two picks before that. Hello. Woo. Yes, sir. Andrew. Andrew. Good. How you doing? Oh, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big weight off. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm with my family. A lot of people. They're like grandparents, aunts, uncles. Yeah, we're all here. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm ready to go. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely fired up. Thankful. Ready, ready to go. Ready to get there. Yeah, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I can't wait. All right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> With the 197th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Trace McSorley, quarterback, Penn State. He's going to be a quarterback for us first. We had him in here for a workout. He threw the ball really, really well. We're excited about that, but also the special teams part of it, because when you've got a guy that's in a role uh, that could play for you, uh, you kind of want him on the field. If you're going to give him a helmet, you want him on the field contributing. So, you know, Trace can definitely do that. He earned it. He did it. I love you. Look, we're proud of you. Now they're going to see. Now they're going to see. Look. Big sigh of relief once I saw that number pop up. I'm so excited to be close to home. Um, family's been one of my most important things my entire life. You know, all these people here celebrating it with me. It's awesome. <laughs> 